the integral of negative e to the cotangent x over sine squared x from pi over 4 to pi over 2. Holy mother of all gods, this is a behemoth. Not only do we have a nasty integral that we've got to deal with, but also we now have limits of integration. So let's deal with this one step at a time. So the first thing to look for is a function as well as its derivative. Here's a hint for you. The du is never going to be in the denominator. I promise you, you cannot have du in your denominator. It makes no sense. Because remember that we're finding the area of rectangles. And so if you're dividing by the width of your rectangle, you're not finding area. So keep in mind that your du will never ever be in the denominator. Now that being said, sometimes your du is hiding. So let's take a look at what our function might be. We have some stuff in the exponent of e. We also have this function on the bottom. Now I can't have e in my function because the derivative of e to the stuff is still e to the stuff and there's no other e around here. This is the only e that we have. So that means that e is not going to be in my function. Now what about sine squared of x? The derivative of sine squared of x, we have to use chain rule for this, is 2 sine of x times cosine of x. Well, uh, there's no single sine of x and there's no cosine of x anywhere around here, so that's probably not going to help me out at all. There's one more thing to look at and that's cotangent x. Now the derivative of cotangent x is equal to negative cosecant squared x. Hmm. I don't have a cosecant so wait a minute. Yes I do. Because cosecant x is equal to 1 over sine of x. And look, I have a 1 over sine. Not only do I have a 1 over sine, I have a 1 over sine squared. So that means that my cosecant squared is 1 over sine squared. Not only that, but I have a negative in front too, which takes care of this negative in front of the cosecant squared x. So let's try this out. Let's just assume that u is equal to cotangent of x. That means that du is equal to negative cosecant squared of x dx. Well, I can rewrite this entire integral to get rid of the sine squared and replace it with a negative cosine squared x. Take a look. This is really the integral from pi over 4 to pi over 2 of negative cosecant squared x because negative 1 over sine squared is negative cosecant squared times e to the cotangent x dx. That makes things so much easier. Look, I've got my u up in the exponent of e and du is exactly what is written here. I don't even have to alter du whatsoever. I've got my negative cosecant squared x dx. So now all I have to do is just replace everything in here. And I've got the integral, and I'm going to hold off on putting in my limits just for a moment, and you'll see why in a second. I've got my e to the u, and negative cosecant squared x dx is du. Now when you have limits of integration like this, these are in terms of x you're going along the x-axis. When we do u du substitution, we create some relation u to x, thereby transforming this entire function in terms of another variable u. You can imagine that we are now integrating along a completely different axis. We're now integrating along the u-axis. And since, when we take the integral, we're just getting the area beneath the curve, 
we could find the area beneath the curve along the u-axis. But that means that we have to change our limits of integration because right now these are in terms of x and I want them in terms of u. So how can I go from x to u? It's actually quite simple. It's really awesome. You use a relation u equals cotangent x. You just plug these values into x and see what they are in terms of u. So for example, let's plug pi over 4 into cotangent. Cotangent of pi over 4, that is cosine of pi over 4 over sine of pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2, which is just 1. And if I plug pi over 2 into cotangent of x, that's cosine of pi over 2 over sine of pi over 2, which is 0 over 1, which gives me 0. Oh my god, this is so much simpler than having to deal with pi over 4, pi over 2, and all that nasty stuff on in there. However, we are integrating from 1 to 0. That's a big no-no. Let's change our limits of integration and put a negative outside. So we've got the negative integral from 0 to 1 of e to the u du. And the antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u and we're going from 0 to 1. We'll keep the negative outside. e to the 1 minus e to the 0 this is the negative e to the 1 is e minus e to the 0 is 1 distribute the negative this is negative e plus 1 or just 1 minus e and this is the answer changing your limits of integration to u is so much easier than having to plug x back into u and then use your original limits of integration. So whenever you can, whenever you have limits, just change them to u using your relation from u to x. It makes the entire problem that much simpler.